that it's sort of happened to me a couple times where, you know, I've done a climb in my head a few times, and then when it came to actual actually doing it in reality, um, there's this weird this weird thing where your brain actually shuts off because you're not actually thinking the dialogue anymore. You're actually just doing what you'd rehearsed in your brain, and so there's this weird I don't even know. It's just this weird phenomenon that happens. I, I guess some people call it just sort of like being in the zone because you, you just basically you stop thinking completely. And for about five or six moves during the middle of that crux, um, there was no thought. It just kind of flowed. And then I can't I remember snapping back to reality when I hit the good, first good hold. And I remember thinking about how good I had it. And that was like all of a sudden it was dialogue. And I was like, oh man, I guess I'm here. And you know I had no choice at that point but to mantle it up and, and finish the route. Um, leading up to that point, I always thought, well, if I wasn't feeling good, I could just drop off and it wouldn't be a big fall. But when I got to that point and my mind came back into reality, I was like, I guess I'm going through with this, you know? I met Sunny. It was about 2000, 99 or 2000, somewhere around there where, where I met Sonny and uh, he came to Squamish, I was already in Squamish. We talked and met and uh, I think pretty much right away we kind of became friends and I sort of knew the area and I remember walking around and showing him uh, some climbs and I showed him a climb that had never been, um, had never been, uh, I guess, red pointed and it was, uh, 14A uh, Silent Manus that he, I guess, did pretty quick. So he likes to march to his own beat, that's for sure. Um, you know, so, and I, I'm kind of get up, I'm kind of a morning guy. So he's not, uh, I need to get up at, you know, I'm, up, I'm happy if I'm up at five in the morning, like I'm, I'm totally happy. Or, uh, and I, or even like, uh, if you call Sonny at 9.30 in the morning, he's like, why are you calling me so early? <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I definitely knew knew about Sonny and the climbing he was doing before before I met him here in Squamish. I think even even when I was like 12 years old, looking at the the magazines in the climbing gym, there'd be pictures of of Sonny, you know, doing hard trad climbs. And when I came out here right away, I just wanted to try to find new lines, free new lines, and that's exactly what Sonny's doing. And so had similar interests and started climbing together, trying new routes. And I think that the, the summary of us working together is just, just really just a connection of, of friends before before the, the professionalism. We just really enjoy each other's company. And I say it's never, it's serious, but it's always, but it's, there's never any pressure. And, and I think he knows that, you know, with me and, and I know that with him. I mean, as much as you want to get the shot, you would never, I would never want to see him be hurt. and. Um, you know, and, he, and so he feels comfortable, and, and he's the same. You know, he doesn't want me to miss my shot, but at the same time, it's just a shot. You know, I mean, it's not worth it. You know, to, to see something bad happen, we can go back. Um, so you know, in, in that regard, just I think it's a mutual respect for each other, and yeah, and and just good friends. One day, uh, me and Sonny were gonna go try his route on the prow wall that he was working on, and he just suddenly said he changed his mind, and we took the, the turn off to the first peak, and he said he wanted to show me a project he'd been looking at, and we wrapped into the wall, and he showed me this just amazing, amazing corner pitch on the pan wall. It's a really, really inspiring line. It's really good climbing. It's old gear, pretty much, especially on the hard pitches, and yeah, it's, it's a pretty proud line for sure. I'm, I'm psyched that, that Sonny went and freed it. And I'd, I'd love to try to free it myself as soon as I can. Uh. Uh. Ah!
cool to have a chance like that with a sport like rock climbing, where it's, for some reason just anybody, any, any climber can beat any other climber, whether they're a professional climber or not. And it's, if you have similar interests and in the kind of climbing you like to do or anything like that, just these uh, friendships and, yeah, like come out of nowhere and the next thing you know you're climbing with one of your you know, original climbing heroes from when you were a kid in the gym. And it's, it's pretty, it's really cool to have, have chances like that with this sport and that's one of the things that I, I like about it for sure. Everyone, it's, 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 a, it's a community, right? Like climbing is like a little community and that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I like to, you know, I'm learning every day a little bit more about how to, how to treat my body and how to, you know, how to handle the, the workload and, and kind of get it all done, you know. Um, but at the same time, it's a, you know, you, it's a great time in your life to, because you have energy for all that stuff. You can, you know, you try and do everything. You try and do it all. You try and hang out with your friends and do rentals on your house and guide and, you know, do your own climbing and spend time with your, you know, with your girlfriend. And so it's like, it's a constant balance with everything. And I don't know. I think uh, I think I got a lot to learn, but I think I've come a long way too.